Hi, I'm Bruce, and this is my 1976 Lake Amphibian. The Lake Aircraft Company began in 1959, and about a thousand of the variants have been built to date. They are the only amphibious manufacturers in the United States. This is the Lake 4 200, also known as the Buccaneer. It has a 200 horsepower Lycoming engine and can seat four passengers. I was lucky enough to meet with Bruce and he took me up for a flight. I was blown away by his performance characteristics on the water. So let's talk to Bruce and learn more about this amazing aircraft. My father always wanted to fly. He uh, served in World War II in the Marine Corps and he wanted to be in aviation. But uh, when the war broke out, they needed artillery officers. He served on Midway and MacArthur's staff as the Marine Corps. And so when he came back, the GI Bill put him, put him through as a pilot. And so in 1946, he got his license and started, started flying. I was born a year later, so as I got old enough, he set me on books and everywhere we went, he told me I was flying. He said, the plane's yours, get me to Pensacola. Or, you got it, we're going to Shreveport. And so, I didn't know what I was doing, but you know, I gradually learned. And it was a time, actually, we didn't have an FAA at the time, we had a CAA, and you know, I actually learned how to navigate before I learned how to fly. So I would be listening to daw dits and dit daws on the left and right of the airways, which was before that, before VORs was a VAR, a variable oral range. And if you were on range, you would listen to these headsets and you'd hear this null sound that you were on the, on the beacon. So I, you know, one day, years later, I guess I was about 12 or 13, Dad got out of the plane, he said, would, uh, would you like to learn how to fly? I said, I know how to fly. And he said, no, I mean, would you like to get your license? I said, oh, God, yeah, I'd love, to, I'd love to get my license. I was a freshman in high school, and the first stipulation was I had to be on the honor roll. He said, I'll buy you two hours a week of lessons. At that time, lessons with a, and I think I was flying a Taylor Craft, were nine dollars an hour. The other stipulation was when you when you go to the instructor, never tell him, "Oh yeah, I know that." You don't know anything. You you start learning from scratch. And so I just was mum with the word and listened and learned, and I found, of course, that I did know know nothing. And it was a, a quite a learning experience. Dad was flying for business, and so I would you know basically go along with him, and I would be the pilot for that. Day that time and then when I got married and I had kids I took a took a little hike from aviation came back got a glider rating uh, I got a took some time in helicopters and got back into it heavy uh, probably in the mid mid to late 70s and at that time that was for, for business um, we have a business that would, it took us all over the country uh, we had a twin bonanza we had a uh, at one point we had a couple of barons and uh, that was how I use the aviation, mostly for business. We did a lot of work over in Houston area, and we said, wait a second, there's this place over in Tomball, Texas, that has uh, amphibians, and Tomball, Texas has a wet strip next to it. There are only a couple of places that have ditches next to their runways. Tomball's one of them. So we went over, flew it, and it was amazing. Uh, the airplane was $26,000 new in 1976. This is officially, it's desi this aircraft is officially designated as an LA-4200. Um, it's the predecessor to it was what was known as the Lake Skimmer. Uh, it was a very underpowered two-seater, um, and then they transitioned that into a 200 horsepower, that was 180 horsepower Lycoming, I believe. Then they transitioned into a 200 horsepower, and then the Lake Buccaneer was born. Uh, which is the LA-4 designation, 200 being the, the 200 Lycoming. Um, it's the only production amphibian in America, um, and it uh, is built. You know, it, it's, you know, when you pre-flight it, you need to check to make sure it flies, floats, and all the other things. Yeah. Flies, floats, and flounders. Yeah. You know, so if it does all three of those things, you're ready to take off. When you pre-flight, you always pre-flight it for water because you never know when you're going to have to land on water. Uh, it, in, in an emergency, it's a, it's a great option to have. The altitude on an amphib is usually never above 500 feet because none of the pilots want to get nosebleed. Literally, it, whatever a, you know, a normally aspirated 
Lycoming would do is your service ceiling. I, I never fly it over 8,000. The biggest spec that I find is everyone asks, well, what's it like landing on water? And it depends. It, it depends on the water, you know? Is it rough water? Is it ripples? Is it glass? Is it chop? Um, because one can be, you know, paradoxically, the most dangerous is like glass because you can't see it. So the horizon as you come down to, to land disappears. So a glassy water landing to an amphibian pilot or to a float plane pilot for that matter is very, very dangerous and something you practice quite often. Um, we practiced and use, using, uh, in southern Florida, we practice throwing a, if you have a complete glassy lake and you don't have a shoreline to reference, fly over, drop out a, throw a, throw a floaty out, throw a life jacket out, hits the water, creates a ripple, and then go land on the life jacket. And that way you have something to see and a reference. Your, your takeoff is, is around 60. Um, you climb it with gear up and flaps up at 80. Um, your approach is at 80 or 70, depending upon whether you're going in for a stall warning, a stall landing or a, or a step landing on the water. So it goes 120 miles an hour or 105 knots. That's the cruise. It's economical. It'll run about 9.5 gallons an hour. It's kind of a, a, a craft that uh, I take my grandchildren out. We'll go out to one of the islands, carry a fishing pole, walk the beach, and if the fish show up, that's a bonus. The Seaplane Fly Pilots Association um, does a real good job of advocacy for, pi for pilots that fly floats. Um, if you fly one of these planes and land in a lake in California, you're going to come home with your airplane with the wings off on a truck. If you land in Florida, Louisiana, Alaska, or, or literally any one of the Gulf Coast states, they're very seaplane friendly. Uh, Louisiana, because of the oil and gas industry, has some of the most ILS and instrument approaches to water of any state in the Union, including Alaska. So uh, it's a great place to have an amphibian. I became friends, I'm going to say 35, maybe 40 years ago, with a guy by the name of Harry Shannon, who runs Amphibians Plus. And Harry's probably one of the most knowledgeable individuals about lakes, but also amphibians. For more than one year, he's been the A&P of the year from the FAA, and uh, that's not trivial. It's uh, difficult to get. Harry's one of those practical guys. He flies, he's an instructor, and he maintains it. He, like I, uh, we have a lot of conversations about this. He's transitioned his business over to his son, Chris, and I'm transitioning my business over to my son, Todd. And so that's a, kind of a, a unique thing to, to share. And uh, I've always been a student of family business, and it's kind of interesting to share that with him. Uh, it uh, looks pretty nice out here. You want to go fly? Sure. Let's do it. Bruce easily handled his lake aircraft, pulling it out of the hangar. Clear prop. You'll have to bear with me for a moment. I was having some difficulties with my equipment and lost the audio from the first portion of the clip. But after I show you the takeoff, we'll pick up with the audio in flight. Those trailing link gear make for a really smooth takeoff and landing. I don't think your camera's gonna get wet. Oh yeah, eh, it's all right if it does. Well, let's let's try to do it smooth to where it does. Go ahead and pick this one. And you say there's a river over here that's a freshwater river that you like? Well, there's, there's uh, the Pearl River is just a little further over, and then uh, the Wolf and the Jordan are probably 15 minutes away though. Okay. Oh, that's fine. Hey, I imagine uh, you got to give this thing a pretty good bath if you're landing in salt water, huh? You, you want to give it a bath regardless, but yeah. uh, you want to give it a real good bath in the last salt water, you're right. right. It's got uh, uh, one, two, three, four, 
three. I think it's five watertight compartments in it. Okay. And uh, one, two, there's seven plugs. One on each wing. Oh, really? Two in the nose, one in the belly, and uh, two in the back compartment. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six compartments. All right, so we'll, what we'll do is we'll use this little area that you see right here. Okay. And what we'll do is we'll take a right downwind on that. And we'll use that area as a landing strip. This little, uh... See that little yeah. coming in? Yeah. We'll just land it there. Okay. And uh, we'll just keep it moving and take off again. And then see if we'll see what we got. And then I'll let you shoot one. <laughs> so is there anything different you do? Like coming, I guess, no gear, obviously, landing on the water, but... Well, i got two different checklists. Here's your land, here's your water. Okay. Gear up, flat. Flaps down. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Do a pump on landing. Okay. It's uh, you know, instead of uh, you know, it's just gear undercarriage mixture props, and I just use. I've gotten to the habit of using undercarriage as opposed to uh, gear. Wow. So it's like a wheel landing, you just let it settle. Yeah. And then it'll roll over. Oh wow. <laughs> That's weird. Now on the water. Wow. Whoa. <laughs> Watching your uh Yeah, no, it's a, ow, I didn't know camera. you could do this on an MW. Well cool. I always get grief from people in the uh in the amphib, in the the float world, yeah, they're always saying, "Oh, you know, how fast is that?" Blah 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 <laughs> blah blah. And I said, "I tell you what, I'll race you." <laughs> yeah. And uh, the stipulation that I always have is, "Okay, on the water." Yeah. <laughs> because they just can't take a turn. Yeah. So now at a dead stop, what you'll do is you drop your water runner. Okay. That comes right out of the. Oh wow. The, the, the stabilizer in the back, out of the. Okay. The rudder. Feels so weird. Oh, I just took you underwater. Oh, that's all right. It's time for it. Still there? Yeah, he's still there. <laughs> wow, this is uh, interesting. <laughs> Man. So yeah, it's, I guess once you get off plane, it really kind of settles down in. Yeah, it, it does. So once you get it up. Then you pull the water rudder. Okay. So that you don't jump, pull the flaps, and you don't accidentally get airborne. <laughs> and she, she's really very maneuverable. Yeah. And you, you can... Another thing for doing with your landing, if you have a real tight landing area, yeah. you can actually skid it. Skid it, And yeah. stop it. And uh, you just have to be real careful to make sure that when you turn, that your whatever your inbound radius of your aileron is, you don't want to make sure you dip that float. Okay. Because otherwise, you'll because you, you're slipping out. Right. What you'll do is you'll hook the float and ah. you push it in. Okay. And they're not very vertically stable. <laughs> now, obviously, in a lake where you've got a small lake. Yeah. What you can do is you can run around the perimeter of the lake yeah. and get your speed up and then okay. come around and, and, and particularly on what's known as a, um, a still water lake, uh -huh. very, very difficult to get the suction off of that. So what you'll do is you go around in a circle and then you come around and you hit your wake and you use your wake to pop it that suction. You up. <laughs> okay. And also you kind of go turn away from the, from the windward side, because uh -huh. that way your tail swings out. Yeah. If I went over there, my tail would be swinging out. I'd be trying to get away from that shore. Right. It'd be hard for me to make this turn. Right. But you're a sailor, so you, you know, knowing, knowing all that kind of stuff, it's the same stuff. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of crossover between aviation and, uh, and uh, yeah. flying, that's for sure. I mean, uh, mar mariner stuff, that's for sure. <laughs> Ah, uh, that is, this is really interesting. I've never, I...
So you're using the, the, the rudder to kind of turn and then you just dip the ailerons. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Bet you that guy fishing over there was like, what is that? Yeah, he's not happy, huh? <laughs> no, I'm sure. All right. That's pretty cool. See if we can find a little bit more open water. Alrighty. I think there's some over at Bayou Bonfica. Problem is, it's a little bit of a crosswind. Not a little bit. Big crosswind. Is there, are these airplanes pretty sensitive to crosswinds, I guess? No. Just no. It's, it's, you know, like any airplane, it's yeah. easy to take off into the wind. Sure, sure. Look. You can see why it's a nice area to fly. Oh yeah, for sure. With the, with this airplane. So when you said you bring your fishing poles along, you just fish right out of the airplane, or do you like actually go somewhere and fish on shore or something? No, you you got about six foot behind you. If yeah. you look in storage, goes yeah. way up in there. Okay. So you can put a pretty good good sized pole in there. Yeah. And uh, bring a little cooler. Yeah. You know. Of course, now the regulations are you can't fly them out there, and you know you got to bring them back. Yeah. Never been stopped, but. It's not something you want to get stopped for. Yeah. They take the game, the game laws in Louisiana pretty seriously. Sure. I guess as they should. Yeah. The other thing you learn is you learn how to read the water. Yeah. As to where the wind is. Right. Because what you're experiencing up here is different, totally different than what's going on down there. Yeah, for sure. Uh, you can tell just by looking at the water too what the how how strong the wind is, where right. it is, and all that too. She's limited to about. I'd say, you know, 12 inch seas. Uh, yeah. You get up to 18 inches, you can land in it, but you're going to have a hell of a time taking off in it. Right. And there's a lot of difference between a swell and a and a, and a chop. Right. If you've got a, a rolling sea, you can actually land parallel to that. Right. Um, if it's calm, you can land it on top of the swell. Right. And just run across it. Yeah. As opposed to trying to, you know, land down into it. Right, right, right. Right. Yes. All right, mixture props. See a lot of the remnants of the hurricane. Yeah. Pretty neat. All right, she's yours. Oh, all right. Trim's here, you just punch it or yeah. pull it. Okay. Where are we headed here? Uh, wherever you want. All right. Okay, so it's just hydraulic, you move it a little and it... Okay. Yes, sir. All right. What you're doing, you just hit the three-way valve. Yeah. And what you do is you punch it and, it'll get, and then you pull it. Center's off. Pretty well. Well, I'm legal for another 90 days now. Oh yeah, got some landings. There you go. All right, we're gonna want to start gaining a little altitude here because we want to cross that at 500. Okay. But all right, see that cut in the shoreline over there? Yeah. That's where we're heading. Okay. They, they're just redoing. They've been doing working on this bridge now for two and a half years. The old. Highway 11 bridge across here. That bridge that you see there, which they call the Twin Spans, yeah. was wiped out, or the predecessor bridge was wiped out, Katrina. 
How was it? The water came across this land bridge from that shore to that shore across in a mass of about 20, oh, 30 no. feet high. Wow. But when it came, when it retreated, yeah. it took the bridge and lifted all the panels and floated them off. And you'll see the old part of the old bridge here that turned into a fishing bridge. Yeah. The new bridge, which was the largest construction project in the state of Louisiana history, was a $1 billion bridge. Right. And they built it in a year. Wow. In a year? Yep. They had a million dollar a day incentive package. <laughs> For and every day they got it done. They, they, got it. they made they made thirty two million dollars extra. Yeah. Based on being early. Wow. Well, that's a nice incentive. Yep. Lakefront Tower, Lake Amphib one zero six eight Lima. Yeah. Lake Amphib one zero six eight Lima, Lakefront Tower. Six eight Lima, Bishu landing Lakefront with Tango. Lima, enter left base, runway 18 left. Left base, uh, 18 left, 68 Lima. Look at all the uh, blue roofs from the hurricane. Yeah, oh, okay, is that what that is? Yeah, those are all tarps. Oh, this, this, is, uh, this is part of the drainage system right here. Okay. That's from the most recent hurricane, though, but Ida or what? Ida, right. Okay. Wow. Wow, I, I didn't notice until then, that's a ton of blue roofs, man. Wow. Yeah. Man. A lot of solar on these houses too. Citation seven zero rubber under. Appreciate it. Wind one six zero one one. Gust wind one seven. Clear land one eight right. Clear land one eight right. Seven zero problem. End of six eight Lima runway one eight left. Clear to land. Traffic citation on about a two and a half mile funnel. Roger. Clear to land on the left side. Six eight Lima. And we'll look for traffic. And end of six eight Lima. That traffic's on the final to the right side. Understood. Citation sensor Bravo traffic is a lake amphib on about a one and a half mile left base to the left side. All right, we're looking for line seven zero Bravo. Troy two two five Roger, frequency change for have a good one. Back over the tower, Troy two two five, appreciate it. There he is. Yep. Right up, right over right. Um, 4215, runway 18 right, line up and wait. Sorry about the wait. Uh, no problem. Line up and wait, 18 right, dot com, 4215. Not as much fun landing on a runway. <laughs> it's still a good day to get on there. Yeah, yeah. Citation 7 0 Bravo, stay parking. Uh, flight line first. Citation 7 0 Bravo, Roger, continue All right. left on. Got her Niner. back safely, thank ground you, sir. Got another sec successful one. Yeah. That was a pretty cool experience. Thank you so much for taking me out. Juliet, ground point seven. Ground at Juliet, six eight. Well, Bruce, thank you, sir. Really cool airplane. That's the first time flying in an Amphib. Yeah, glad you enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, come back anytime. Next time I'm passing through uh, New Orleans, I'll definitely tell you. Definitely. All right, thank you, man. Cool. So thank you guys for tuning in. Really appreciate it. If you click like and subscribe, really helps out with the channel ratings, makes this whole thing possible. Thank you guys so much, and we'll see you on the next video.